Hey guys, welcome back to Beach and Fishing. This is my site aimed at all things to do with fishing. Um, rods, reels, lures, line, whatever it is we're talking about with fishing. I'm an avid fisherman and to be honest, I just wanted a site where I could share what I talk about with my friends all day, every day when we, when we get together. And today, as part of that, we're gonna look at our, my three best bait caster rod and reel combos for kayak fishing. I mean, to be honest, it's called kite for kayak fishing. Could This one could pretty much be for general fishing as well. So let's get stuck into it. Um, as I mentioned, we're talking about bait casters today. This is a bait caster reel. Uh, for those of you who haven't looked at these sort of things before, as opposed to a more traditional spinning reel. Spinning reel or egg beater reel. This is one I got for surf, but it's here, so I can show you. Um, Bait caster reels sit on top of the rod rather than underneath, so a, a traditional spinning reel works like that. Uh, bait caster reel obviously goes off like this. The uh, drag sits on the side, the line spills out the front, and off you go. Now, we'll go through each individually in a second as to what to look for when you're looking at a rod and reel combo for the kayak. Uh, you would choose one of these. Why would you choose one of these? Um, mainly for the fact that they're very accurate and they can cast quite accurately and cast quite a long way. They can cast further than the spinning reel in general. Um, when you're on a kayak, it's probably the casting distance probably isn't as critical, or isn't for where we fish anyway, as, a, um, as anything else. That said, bait casters are very good for their, their drag um they cut the reason they cast further is because as the line spills out spills out the front there it tends to come out straight obviously with a spinning reel as it comes out it comes out on that when you drop the bail there it comes out in that sort of you know that twirly fashion which can slow down the casting um that said this one casts a mile it's a good reel for that uh but casting right the, the bait casters of that they're a bit more accurate as i keep saying you can handle the dra drag a bit better. And we use these because we hunt, um, hunt we fish for a species called mangrove jack. And you need to get, in, the minute you land them, you need to get them away from the mangroves immediately. So a braid line because it won't have the stretch. And also the bait caster reel with a very, very light, if non-existent drag. We normally have no drag on. Once you get them out, then you can adjust it slightly to give yourself a bit of a wiggle room and you don't snap your braid that way. Um, they need a lot more work. They're a bit harder to use, to be honest. I've been fishing for most of my life and I still struggle with these quite a lot, um, which is why I've never really used them as much as I've used the spinning reels. As I've said, I bought this one's brand new, this reel, bought it for the surf. Um, because I don't want to cast my lures a bit further. I still got one of them rather than a bait caster, but a lot of people love these. This one isn't actually mine. It's a friend of mine's and he uses it all the time and swears by them. So if you're in the bait caster market and looking for a good bait caster rod and reel combo, let's have a look at what you should be looking for. So the first thing I've got here is the rod. This is a one piece. Uh, this one is a graphite rod. It is very light. Obviously you can't see that on the video, but it is extremely light. It has a little butt on the end, um, cork. A lot of um, bait caster ones are made of cork because again, it makes them lighter. Uh, what else can we talk about with this? It's 5.6 uh, foot. I don't know what uh, don't know what that is in, in meters. It handle a four to a seven kilo line weight, which is quite strong. And it's a nice light little rod. So what you would, would be looking for, what I'd recommend is anything that has a rod between the around the five and a half up to maybe seven foot as a max for a kayak reel, a kayak rod, sorry, for um, with a bait caster. Easy to handle, very light. You can move them around the kayak quite well. So that's what I'll be looking for. As I say, this one's made of graphite, carbon or graphite, they tend most of them to be, the, from what I found in my research. Uh, a lot of them are two piece. This one's quite small, it fits on the back seat of the car. But if you have anything a bit longer and you can't fit in the car, then you probably go to two piece from there. It's got a little hook holder there. Um, not much else to it. If, you, if you're looking up, look for anything with a nice ceramic or ionodized, I think the word is zinc. Um, eyelets because they they're nice and smooth. Um, 
can't think of much else to tell you there. As I say, this one hand, this one's handle is um, cork. Some of the EVA or rubber. That's a comfort thing. Depends what you like, but nice and light. Five point five and a half to seven foot, and you're going well with your rod. Okay, let's talk about the reel. Now, the bait caster reel you have here. The reason that the bait caster reels are a little bit harder to use is because when you cast them, you cast them by dropping a little link down the back there and you go whooshka and the line flies out the front and if the line goes too fast it tangles in bird's nest. So what these have here is some magnetic settings. This one's a magnetic um, uh, brakes. I couldn't think of the word I was looking for there. Uh, so it will slow that down so you can set that as high or as low as you like. Uh, the higher means that there's not much a uh, lot of break on there, sorry, and it will slow it down quite a lot. Uh, lower means less break on there and it will let you cast a lot faster. That's something to play with. You get it out there, don't go whoosh, your first one if you haven't set your brakes because you will end up with a bird's nest. All your braid in here will just go whoosh, and braid you can't untangle. It'll take you forever to get that all out. But just play with a couple times to get used to your where you want your magnetic brakes to go. Some of the more expensive models have the brake on the side, and then they have centrifugal, centrifugal brakes inside as well, and it'll automatically identify when it's starting to get too fast and will slow it down for you automatically. Uh, you have another little option here. What that does is it determines when it will it will stop the reel when it feels the when when the pull stops when it hits the water. So as soon as it hits the water and it doesn't need any more, that'll click in and basically stop it from feeding out because again, if the spool's moving, it will bird's nest everywhere. You've got your drag on the side here. So as you're casting in, um, you can adjust your drag there for as fast or as, as light or as deep as you need. Deep, heavy, light or heavy, <laughs> whichever way you want your drag. Uh, it's a lot, there's a lot more um, a lot more sensitive and e and easy, not easy, but, but um, can't think of the words I'm trying to use today. A lot more sensitive than the spinning reel one, so you can really know you drag down quite well with these ones. Um, I am persevering with these. I'm about to go and purchase one, so when I do, I'll shoot a few videos of me using it to show you what happens, hopefully, if I don't cast it or I don't spool it or break it or do whatever. But that's your... your um, Bait caster reel for in a combo. Most of the time, a combo rod it'll come with the the rod, so you won't really have to worry about matching the reel to the rod if you're not if you're not buying them separately. Um, it'll be nice and balanced towards the rod. Uh, this will be either a carbon or an aluminium or some sort of lightweight material. Look for make sure it's stainless steel. Uh, this one doesn't have them. Some of them have a little um, little well in there where you can put some lubrication oil and stuff in to to maintain them just rinse them out the same as you would any other reel once you've used it make sure it's look for the brakes part on it look for the um you know the stopper there the the um oh my god i cannot speak today <laughs> the drag on the side there this one has a ratio of around not around it is 6.2 to 1 it only has three ball bearings in this one ball bearings are the same as spinning reels the more you can get for the price the better the thing to do with line on these ones i'm going to put my glass on so i can't read this on this because it's quite small if i can spin this around without putting the reel let's take it off before i snap john's rod on the wall uh this one's settings is on a spinning reel you might be aware you might be used to the fact that it has a size on there somewhere. Does this one have it on there? Uh, the box, I've got the box. Here's the box. 6,000. So 6,000 means that on a mono line it holds around 6 kilo line. For a um, bait caster they work a little bit differently. So this has got line capacity pounds to yards. 10 pound 180 yards of line, 12 pound 130 yards of line, 14 pound 110 yards of line. Look at that from, <coughs> compare that to braid. Braid you'll fit a lot more line on because it's generally thinner than the mono line. That's, those settings there will be on mono. So that's how much you can put on. And if it's got those three poundage there, that's how much pound of line this, this 
reel will take. So whereas the spinning reels will go to 6,000, and then I'll say, any, you know, about six to six, between four to ten, four to eight pound in mono for a 6,000 reel, about to take out to anywhere from eight to 12, I think for a mono, I could be slightly off on that, but that's for braid toe, that's what that'll handle. This tells you on the side there what it will take in a mono setting. So that's your, your, um, bait caster rod and reel. So I've come up, I've had a bit of a look around with you. You can read more about that. That was so disjointed, I know, I apologize for all that. Um, but you can read all that in the post here. I've got all that information written in hopefully something that will make some more sense to you. So we talk about the bearings, rotation, drag, casing, the brakes. So they're the brakes, the spool tension adjustment on the side, your spool size that we talked about. Okay, so what I've got here for you is three options that I've gone and looked at. Um, as always, I've looked at it based on the reviews and the cost. First one is your budget area. Su, Su Gilang, um, is it's a Chinese brand. Their reviews are generally mixed. But on this one, it is quite good. Uh, 5.9 to 6.9 foot um, rod, medium fast power. Power is how bendy it is. I didn't mention that before. So the, if it's light, it's gonna be very <coughs> bendy. Medium is a good middle of the range one, a good one for kayak. Fast action means it bends at the top, which means it's very good for casting. Four piece carbon fiber. So it's a, it breaks right down. Rubber grade, high grade rubber cork and handle. Spool size, 10, 12 or 14 pound. 9.1 bearing, 7.0.1 uh, ratio. And it's got the, the drag and the magnetic brakes. Five magnets, that's another variation you have in the magnets. They'll have different um, number of magnets. Of the theory is the more magnets, the better the stronger it is. Um, as I say, it's a good all round one for good price, lightweight, stainless steel, zinc oil drive gear, so a good one there. So that one goes for around 68 bucks. Next one, Cast King uh, Creus, sorry. Um, six to seven foot again, probably around say around a six foot medium fast two piece graphite golf style polymer handle. It's uh, almost looks like a golf club handle. Uh, eight to seventeen pound. Didn't say the length, but it, you'll see it on the. I couldn't see it on the pictures, but it'll say it on the real seven plus one bearing six point five to one. Again, nice and light. Eight magnets, zirconium oxide O rings, salt and fresh water. Again, very good one, and I would. I'm actually looking at getting this one myself. Doesn't have the price now. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I'd have to look on that. It was around 80 bucks, I think, from memory. Good reviews. Very good one. This is one I'd be looking at, especially for a kayak. And the last one here, for those of you who want to go the real high end, uh, this one has great reviews again. A lot more expensive, but with bait casters, I have found that uh, from ex not from experience, but from talking to friends of mine, to be honest, with bait casters, you definitely get what you pay for. So this one, if you want something, if you have experience using bait casters, you want a really good option, especially if you use some elsewhere and you want one for the kayak. Lose is a very, very solid brand. They, they're high-end fishing gear, but they have always had good reviews and they work extremely well based on what I have been able to find in my research. Seven foot three inches, so maybe a little bit longer than I'd normally recommend for kayak. Medium fast, uh, one piece graphite, and the polymer dry tack split grip, which is effectively a fancy way of saying golf club type handle. Uh, 12 pound 110 was the only spool size I could see, but I think there's probably, there'd definitely be more on there. Again, just have a look at, if it's 12 there, it'll either go 12, 14 or 16, or 10, 12, 14, you'd be around that mark. Uh, nine plus one, 7.5 to one. Graphite frame, um, star brag, externally adjustable cast controlled magnets and four individually disengaged, dismounted internal brake shoes. So that's the centrifugal one. So that's one I was talking about before. So this one here is gonna make it much easier to, if you're someone who, as I say, has got experience with these ones and really wants to narrow down and really get some real, finite settings with your baitcaster, that would be the one to choose. 
Okay, that's it guys. That's my three best bait and caster rod and reel combos for kayak fishing. Hope that was helpful for you. If you're watching this within the video, please like and subscribe to my channel below. That way I can keep you up to date with all my stuff to do with fishing. Um, if you're watching this from the post and you have experience with bait casters, you have your own opinions. One thing I always mention in all my videos and posts is I love how everyone has a different opinion when it comes to fishing. If you don't agree with me, get on some Facebook groups and just see what everyone says. It's, it's, it's fantastic and I love getting comments on my post telling me that what I'm saying is not accurate and they find this because everyone finds different things so comment below if you if you've got any difference of opinion or any that you've used if you've got experience with any of these or you just have some questions i'd love to chat with you okay guys good fishing happy fishing and i'll chat with you soon bye